Hi. Um, the reason I'm slightly out of breath is I have literally just rushed back from the cinema from the one of the first screenings of No Time to Die, the new James Bond film. <clears throat> um, this was the first Bond movie, well, the first movie at all, to be uh, postponed um, when the lockdown was imposing and the, the pandemic was uh, moving across the world early last year. It was put off and put off over and over again. And for me, a lifelong Bond fan, this was the light at the end of the tunnel. When the Bond movie came out, that meant that things were going to be better, that that was going to be the end. And it was going to be my reward for making it through the whole lockdown pandemic. Just just for me, not, you know, I, I appreciate other people have had much worse problems. I understand that entirely. But for me, this was my reward. What I got instead was a kick in the fucking bollocks. Um, it's wildly overlong. It's an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, it should be at least half an hour shorter. I'm actually going to try and avoid spoilers as best I can. I appreciate you know, with a movie like this, you have to avoid spoilers. I'm going to do everything I can not to give away the major elements of the plot, just stuff that's been in the publicity. Um, but it's far too long, and the, the script is the biggest problem, as is always the case with these things. It's It feels like an early draft. The plot is far too shaggy, and it's it's too disconnected. There are major, major reveals, even ca major character introductions. Bond's first appearance is so low-key, it makes me wonder whether there was something cut. As, you know, when Bond appears on the screen, that's, you know, introduction of the main character. No, he just sort of wanders in from off, off the side of the, of the side of the frame. Um, we have a lot of characters with backstory set up. We have characters with, and you know, several new characters with no backstory. Um, and we have in the villain, I think one of perhaps the least motivated villain in the, the series history, who seems to be, uh, his plan has appeared to be based entirely on just wanting to be evil. Um, it's not really, you know, because he's bad. And as a result, we have a very flat, uninteresting story because it's not motivated by anything. And we have a flat, uninteresting villain in Rami Malek who performs his entire performance on a very low, flat, one-dimensional register. He's a very uninteresting, uncharismatic character. Um, Daniel Craig delivers his worst performance of the series. Um, and a big problem is, I think it's it's quite clear, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's version of the script, because there's a lot of humour and a lot of additional dialogue added, which is completely out of tone with anything in the other movies, the any of the other Craig movies. Um, there are there's just there's lots of extra bits, extra dialogue that just feels like this is fat. It's slowing everything down. Action scenes take are just drawn out and protracted. Un, there's you know, scenes towards the end of you know, the huge final battle. I was bored. I was willing them to get on with it because it's it's so unmotivated. It's just going on and on and on with no development. It's just people running around firing guns at each other. It's boring. Um. Daniel Craig keeps dropping out of character when doing these sort of humorous elements or more character-based elements. He feels more like the Daniel Craig I've seen in interviews rather than the Bond I've seen in the last four movies. And although you could argue that the character has developed and evolved, particularly during the five-year gap since Spectre took place and was released, it's too much of a jump to be sensible. I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed by this. It's it's obviously Craig's worst Bond film. It's probably the worst film in the series. My two least favourites previously had been uh, From Russia With Love, I know, and Quantum of Solace. But From Russia With Love is at least tight and focused and has some really strong action scenes, even though Bond acts like a moron all the way through the movie. Quantum of Solace is tight and focused, and it's a decent action movie, even if it's not a great Bond film. This is not tight and focused. It's wildly overlong. It's nearly an hour longer than Quantum of Solace. It's flabby. It's poorly written. It's poorly characterised. The music, Hans Zimmer's score, is just generic, bland, 
atmospheric score. He incorporates the Bond theme and the title theme, which is the title theme is the best part of the movie. The title graphics are, again, lifting elements from previous Bond movies as though to bring everything to a conclusion, but it doesn't have any coherent aesthetic. And as a result, it doesn't really work or make any sense. Um, the performances are at best average. Ana de Armas, who has quite a small supporting role, is, is quite likable as a Cuban spy, but it just doesn't hang together. It's so... This is before I even get to the stuff that I can't talk about. <sighs> Ask me about it sometime. It'll be in the review of the year. Um, but this is really a disaster. Um, I'm baffled by the good reviews because it's overlong, slow, far too talky, boring and completely fails to live up to any kind of potential that it might have. It's a disaster. <laughs>